Welcome to TechRazor with Damero. In this video, we are going to learn about mapping data flow in Azure Data Factory. So we are going to be starting with a lot of practical experiments where we are going to learn a lot of different things. So in this experiment, what we are going to do, we are going to load CSV file to the Azure SQL database table. We will be creating a, a table uh, from the CSV file, that's our first step. And then uh, we'll be also creating a table by ourselves, uh, uh, taking a look on the data types and all that, and then load uh, the data to specific uh, table. Also, what we will do, we will uh, load the file name of that uh, uh, file that we are going to load from our blob story to the Azure SQL table. So there are so much to learn. Let's go ahead and start from very scratch and see right here, I'm on a portal.azure.com and here's my Azure Data Factory. Now I have created a SQL database and I'm connected to that database right here in the SSMS. So you can see right the, the tech browser IT DB is the name of the database. And uh, that's where we will be creating tables. Now let's go back to our portal and uh, here uh, what we are going to do, we are going to start with the data factory. Once we click on data factory, it's going to ask you open the Azure Data Factory Studio. So let's open it. Now we are here in the pipelines or author. Once you click on author, you're going to see pipeline data set, data flows, and power query. Now, what we would like to do, we will be creating a data flow. Once you create the data flow, that has to be used in the pipeline. So that's where first you create the data flow and then call that data flow in the pipeline. Now, click right there on three dots and then go to new data flow. Once you are in the data flow editor, what's going to happen and the very first thing you want to do is the data flow debugger. Enable that button. What's this going to do is going to ask you, hey, you want to create a data brick cluster that will be four plus four cores. That means eight cores and which region auto resolve. So I'm using auto resolve integration runtime. If you have created different integration runtimes, you can use that. So let's say you want to use uh, some uh, with the higher core count because uh, you want to test a large amount of data and uh, see how exactly work. Um, so you can uh, choose the integration runtime, whatever you want to use it. In my case, I'm not fine with auto resolve. Four cores are fine. And I'm going to create this cluster for one hour because I have to pay the bill for this uh, cluster. So I don't want to create a large uh, core size cluster and then uh, just, you know, um, pay a whole lot of money. But in your case, uh, that's possible because uh, you might want to keep uh, uh, developing for next four hours or three hours. So in that case, you can select one hour, two hour or four hour. Now, the, our cluster is uh, uh, being uh, in process of creating. So right now it's creating our cluster. And uh, meanwhile, we can kind of start uh, working on our data flow, but we will not be able to use a lot of feature as well, like such as preview data and all. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, take a look here. First of all, we are going to create uh, a source. Uh, click on source and now we will be using data set. Uh, there are two types of data set available here, data set and inline. Uh, in the data set, that means if you create this data set, uh, it's going to show you right under this one. And this can be used in different uh, pipelines. Uh, such as in a different maybe copy activity or something or different data flow when you create another data flow. But if you use inline, that means that this will be specific to this data flow. So you will not be able to use in the other places and different pipelines. That is fine. We are okay with that to create as a data set for now. But think about your scenario if you are using a same data set uh, you know, in multiple pipeline, okay to create uh, one data set. But if it is only one time, you might want to go for uh, inline instead of having uh, thousands of uh, data sets uh, for you, you know. So it depends upon your scenario. I'll let you choose that. Uh, now we will go to the new here and go to the Azure Blob Storage uh, because uh, that's where our CSV file is sitting now. So open this, the delimited text here or CSV file. And uh, meanwhile, it is opening. Uh, let me take you to the CSV file and show you first. Um, so that's our blob story right there. And I have two containers. Uh, one of the containers is called the input container. That has a total sale file. Let's edit and see the data. See right there, it has the ID, sale person first name, last name, product name, item sold, item price, sold date, city, state, and country region. Um, there are 13 records or 14, I don't know how many. Yeah, there are uh, 11 records with the header as well. And uh, then I have uh, 
inserted a few records uh, just as a blank uh, so we can see how exactly the blank records work uh. now we are all good here what we are going to do we are going to go back to the our uh, data set uh, and here i will be creating this uh, linked service uh. so i'm going to go to create new and uh, then here i will be selecting uh, the subscription so go to subscription and here you will be selecting your storage account uh. So it is going to be TechBridge Storage, and then uh, that's all you have. Uh, now the name of this so uh, LNK, or you can call it Data Data Flow, and uh, Tech Brothers. Okay, that's what our name is uh, for this uh, linked service. So that's pointing to our storage. Uh, we can test, and uh, it should be successful. Create. Now our link service is created. Uh, meanwhile, our cluster is also ready and the session ID for that cluster is this. Um, so now what we can do here, we are gonna go to the file path and here uh, what we'll do, we'll go to the input and select our file. Now the file is selected, it has header. So I select uh, file first to has header and I'm gonna just leave this one to none for now. Now hit okay and uh, we should be all good. We can go ahead and preview our data. So go to preview data click refresh it's a, and it's going to read all the data and show us them. Um, so when I say all the data that does not mean the millions of records that is going to get some sample data for us. Uh, here you can see that we have ID, sale person first name, last name and all other data right there. Um, pay attention to this uh, sole data I have something to do with this one uh, and then uh, remember that there are two records uh, at the end of uh, they were blank uh, so it's uh, showing up as a null values. Uh. Now we can uh, further go uh, right here source option and there are tons of options you can explore we are going to explore all of these in different demos uh, now i'm going to leave this as it is and uh, go to the sync uh, now click right there on the plus sign and uh, i'm going to go to the sync and uh, then uh, click on sync uh, i'm uh, making a connection or i have to create the data set uh, for my sync uh, right here also we have three of them so you see right there you have data set inline and cache so I will go over these one later on and we will uh, talk about these uh, you know tons of details about these ones um, and experiment. Uh, now if uh, you remember my database is in Azure SQL DB so we are Azure SQL DB that's what we are going to select um, hit continue and then uh, we can create the link service. Um, I'm going to create a new link service uh, my subscription is there and my service name is TechBrowser IT my database name is the TechBrowser DB and my username is TB user. Password is very easy, and uh, that's the DBA one two three test. So those kind of things, uh, all good. Test create, and we can call it uh, Tech Brothers SQL. So that's the link service. So I always give some proper name. I'm I'm not caring uh, right here, but uh, always give a proper name for your link service so you can reuse it wherever you need, and you know where it is pointing to. Now there are two options here. We have select from existing table or we can create a new table. Let's go with creating a new table first. Um, now what schema? If uh, you have DBO schema, just provide DBO schema and then uh, total sale and uh, data flow. Yeah, that's all a um, test. Okay. And uh, that's uh, the name I'm giving to my table. Hit OK here and uh, you're all good. Uh, if you remember, see here, I did not do settings. Uh, we can go to this one later. We are going to lay in the next videos. Uh, if you see in the mapping, it says auto map. You know? So now we are all set here. Let's play with this as it is. And then we are going to figure out a few more things here. Now, first of all, you are going to create a new pipeline. And once the pipeline is created, you can drag your data flow right there. And then uh, you can debug. Finally, our data flow is completed. And you can see that it took one minute, five, uh, five seconds. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look here and uh, we can see some information right there. So if you want to click right there and see uh, right there rows calculated, total partition, how much time it took on the destination side. If you want to see, you know, sync processing time and all that, it uh, kind of help you to take a look. Um, so even we didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't do any post and pre and all those kind of things. So now we will do those uh, scripts as well. Uh, now what we can do here, uh, we can go back to our pipeline and uh, there, that's where, let me take you to the pipeline and our data uh, flow is completed. Let me go to the SQL database, uh, refresh our table list and here is our table called total sale 
DF test. First of all, let's study the data types it used or chose to create the table. If you see here, when it is creating the table itself, it is taken everything as N worker max. That is okay if you are just putting into staging area, that's fine because you might be just deleting the table or truncating the table. But think about that, this is not a right data. Uh, uh, data type choice. Uh, so ID should be number, first name, maybe 100 characters, and uh, this can be other worker, uh, you know, instead of N worker. So these all values like a sole date uh, should be date instead of uh, N worker. But that's fine. Uh, data flow is going to select uh, the data types uh, N worker max uh, if you see in, in this scenario. So this is going to help you to understand uh, and save a lot of money and save a lot of uh, storage and all that. See right there, the data came just fine. Um, so we can see right there, we have ID and uh, then we have other columns as well. And there are two rows uh, which are null. Um, you remember that uh, because we have uh, those rows by purpose, uh, we want to insert them. So you can see how exactly this works. Um, now, from here, uh, as I said that this is not the correct data type. So what we want to do, we want to create a, a table called total sale. So I created this uh, table. And uh, if you see the definition of this total sale table, uh, I said that uh, DBO total sale, and then I have ID integer, sale person first name, worker 100, and the sale person last name, worker 100, product name 100, and item sold integer, item price in the float, and sold date uh, is equal to date, and then other columns are worker. Also, I added one more column called file name. So now we can load the data to the total sale. Okay, that's the right table and that's where we should load the data instead of creating the table on the fly. Let's go back and play with that. Now we go back to the data flow and here in the sink, what we are gonna do, we are gonna go to the open again and here in the data set, we are going to select a total sale table. See, debut our total sale. Now it's all good and we don't have to do anything else and we are gonna go back, back to pipeline and then uh, debug. That's what we did. So let's see how it uh, treats that. Let me see if there is any data here. Yeah, there is some data. So I'm going to truncate this table. So I truncated the table. As of now, there is uh, no data because uh, our pipeline is still in progress. Let's see what we have here. Oh, okay. So see right there, it says cannot insert the value null into table uh, column ID. It means uh, the data type, uh, remember that there are two records we are getting null and they're trying to insert the null value into the ID. That's fine. So we can go back and take care of it. Uh, let me drop the table and recreate this table. So I'm gonna drop the table and then we'll recreate the table. And here uh, I'm creating the ID with the null. So I'm, I'm accepting the null value here, okay? so. Last, uh, this table actually was uh, pointing, this, uh, what I was showing you here, it was pointing to the Azad server. So actually I should be pointing to the tech browser. So anyways, we have the table ready and then uh, we have also, we can accept the uh, IDs as a null values. Uh, now we should be fine. Uh, we can go back here and we can debug again. I created all these scenarios and experiment for you because uh, I, when I learn, uh, I want to play with that and I want to see the errors. Once I see the errors, then I, at least it uh, help me to learn and experiment and see like, oh, if this happened, what I need to do. So in this case, as you have seen that you have uh, null values in some of the column and they are not accepting null. So there are two things you can do. One thing I did as uh, I made my uh, ID as accepting a null so it can accept null or other way you have to redirect those rows or take care of those rows in the data flow so that we will do later and uh, now we can go ahead and uh, select let's see if it has completed yes our data flow has completed successfully now and uh, we are going to go back to our uh, SSMS and here you can see that uh, it is inserting ID first name last name and all that and there are two null rows at the end also, if you notice that here, sold date. In the last time when we created that table, if you remember, it provided the sold date. So uh, when you have N worker max, uh, no problem at all. But uh, when uh, we define our column data type equal to the date, it's uh, not able to read that. Let's see what uh, can be done to bring that information. 
And also on each of the execution, we want to truncate this table. So let's see if that's also possible. So let's go back to data flow here in the, uh, let's go to source here and then uh, go to the projection and uh, let's say import a projection. Now it is importing the schema for us and I'm gonna see uh, what exactly schema it is using for each of the column. Okay, this is ready and you can see their sole date is the data. And then we have to specify some format. Uh, right now there is no format. And if you guys remember that the format for our CSV file for the sole date column is a month and then you have a, a day and then you have year. So that's what we are gonna do. So go to format here and then say month, day and year. And it's a MM in some of the scenarios, even you see that I don't have zero, zero here, you know, so I don't have two digits. So I have even M only, but that's, uh, I hope it's gonna take care of that as well. So I did that part and then uh, now I don't have to do anything else. Also in the source, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the source settings and here I'm going to say column to the store file name and I'm gonna give that name file name. So that will be given as well. And uh, now, if you remember that we have created this table uh, with the file name column. So that should be populated and uh, this should be also taken care of. One other thing, we wanna truncate the table. So go to sync here and then uh, in the sync, uh, go to settings and uh, truncate table. So click right there in the settings. So it will be truncated first and then uh, load the data. So this is all done. Go back to your pipeline and debug. Okay. so. What happened, our table was truncated and then data is loaded again. Let's go and take a look if this time the data came correct. So let's run select statement and you can see right there. So we have ID, first name, last name and all that. Also the sole date come, came just fine. Now we have the data for all that and the values looks fine. So, but in SQL it is showing you year, month and day. So that's fine, we can always, if we want to display in a different format, we can use a SQL queries uh, to, for the way we want to show them in the uh, select query. Now also the file name came just fine here. Now null values are there because we have the null values in the source. I don't wanna make this video too long. What we wanna do from here, we are gonna go for the next scenario in the next video and we will take from there. I, as I promised, I'm gonna go through a lot of tabs and a lot of experiments and a lot of videos. So you will learn pretty much everything that comes in daily scenarios. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.